The first reading of the data is concerned with variations. I contrast information both within data from a single informant and across informants. This renders discursive and non-discursive variations clearer. The need for different types of data arises from the idea that personal views may vary and co-occur through formulation, second thoughts, spontaneous contradiction. Writing first impressions and underscoring what seems peculiar are helpful tools to start off with before moving onto a more fine-grained analysis. For now, it is important to gain a sense of the main ideas contained in the text and the images, and how they flow through. The flow of ideas through the data can be traced in a manner akin to following somebody's journey through a crowd, and see where they start, finish or disappear, and then looking again, this time following somebody else. This tip is meant to make the researcher familiar with the contents of the data more purposefully. The second step has to be aided by the participants in a second sitting, this time focusing on data generated by themselves, notably the images. The analysis might begin with the differences, contrasts, gradients and ranges, both within a single visual and among a series of visuals. In this second sitting, the differences between representations become more evident, which in turn will enable a richer coding process because of the wider contrast. The informant must participate in the analysis. We intentionally avoid proposing an a priori interpretation of the sociograms and drawings, which would be unjustifiably deterministic. It is useful to have at hand a set of broad questions like what did you want to tell with this drawing? Could you tell me more about that? The next step focuses in on coding and recurrences. The researcher interrogates data and proposes hypotheses, and in the process generates a more focused type of annotations in the form of code. I find it easiest to begin by using very mundane codes, which are later discarded in favor of more conceptual ones. One might prefer doing this by hand, using a pencil and a rubber so that you can erase any mistake completely, not that they can promise anything. Nevertheless, at this stage the coding is approached with an open-minded attitude. We bracket what we already know about the subject, yet keeping that knowledge at the back of our mind while exploring the subject. By now, we should have to an intimate knowledge about the data as explored through the initial broad questions which gave us a sense of variations. The whole point about coding is to sift relevant pieces of data from the initial corpus, and so, in a way, it is a means to obtaining condensed data by reduction. In doing the coding, asking oneself questions and trying out hypotheses, the text can serve to interrogate visuals. This step brings the analysis back into relationship with informants. It offers a way of explaining discrepancies and enhancing consistency as it revisits loose ends, unasked questions and remaining hypotheses. Here, confrontation is oriented to divergent, and clear or confusing answers of the informants, and the researcher will want to see evidence to dispel doubts to a reasonable extent by using the informants' own explanations. This step offers a way of re-reading the data to refine the codes. The codes themselves 
are organized into larger categories with a view to developing an understanding of the research problem as it bears on the question being raised. At this point, we have analyzed representations having visualization as a prime medium to recall memories, elicit information, interrogate discourses, and control for coherence. In so doing, I now look for general patterns that will contribute to providing an answer to the problem. But the price of establishing what is general is more often than not to filter out the bits that do not fit the patterns. In the final step of the method, having gone through the data at least five times, once memos, arrows, flags and tags are no longer dominating the scene, it is time to tie up what has been learned about the case in a meaningful answer to the research question. This process is, in essence, a composition of an argument in light of the new knowledge. In looking back to the research question, several other questions may arise, which may be worth considering in the discussion of the research process. Eventual questions may be, what is the concrete evidence we have to support our claims? How consistent is it? Or how do we know that which is being claimed? Since this is an inductive process, it might be the case that the initial research question and the aim of the study need to be reformulated or adjusted. Oftentimes, the initial questions are posed only as a way to begin exploring what we don't know we'll find.